China's military said today it's ready to fight after completing three days. Of China is planning to build a new military training facility. Meanwhile, China is in talks to build a joint military facility. In or a message to the U.S. China has been rapidly developing its military technology in recent years, posing a serious challenge to the U.S. and its allies. Among its many weapons projects, one of the most alarming is its advancement in laser weapons. This may sound like fiction, but laser weapons are now a part of the military arsenal, at least in China, where huge technological advancements have been made. These weapons can potentially destroy or disable satellites, drones, missiles, and aircraft, giving China an edge in future conflicts. Join us as we examine how advanced China's new direct laser weapon is and how it could change everything. China's approach to space exploration is different from many other nations, primarily due to the fact that its space program operates directly under the control of the People's Liberation Army PLA. This integration of military and space activities ensures that considerations for military applications are integrated right from the inception of any space project. Much like China's nuclear program, which initially had strong military ties before evolving into both military and civilian uses, its space program has followed a similar trajectory. One of the foundations on which China built its space launch capabilities was its Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles ICBM. Leveraging this technology, China worked on improving missile performance, often drawing from knowledge and technology inadvertently acquired from the United States. This technological transfer laid the groundwork for China's space program to rapidly progress and compete on the global stage. This dual-purpose approach has many advantages. On one hand, it improves China's overall national power, bolstering its position as a global power. On the other, it serves to legitimize the rule of the Communist Party of China CPC, by showcasing significant achievements in space exploration, reinforcing the party's leadership and its commitment to technological advancement. Chinese President Xi Jinping has been an advocate for the country's space endeavors. The Chinese state media consistently portrays the space dream as a pivotal step towards China's national rejuvenation, emphasizing how space achievements are instrumental in elevating the nation's status and influence on the global stage. This perspective aligns with China's central concept of comprehensive national power, where achievements in space exploration are seen as vital components in its quest for prominence and influence in the 21st century. The summary of all that is that China is serious about space and military tech, and the whole world is beginning to notice. One notable aspect of China's military modernization particularly since 2015, is its emphasis on fractionalization. This approach entails breaking down complex tasks into smaller, more manageable components. In the context of space operations, this has translated into an accelerated pace of space launches. By launching a greater number of satellites and space-based assets, China aims to bolster its military and civilian capabilities in areas such as communications, navigation, surveillance, and reconnaissance. However, it's important to note that in space operations, the significance of a single event or satellite launch is fully realized when it is complemented by the creation of supporting infrastructure. Infrastructure development is crucial to ensure sure that space assets can effectively serve both military and civilian purposes. This includes ground control stations, data processing centers, and communication networks, all of which are essential for maximizing the utility of space-based systems. In terms of institutional architecture, a pivotal development in China's pursuit of space power is the establishment of the PLA Strategic Support Force, PLA SSF. This is a theater command level organization created to bring together various elements of the people's Liberation Army's PLA strategic capabilities including space, cyber, electronic warfare, and psychological operations. The PLAS SF's primary objective is to achieve synergy and coordination among these previously dispersed functions, thereby enhancing China's ability to project power and respond to evolving threats in an integrated manner. In 2018 and 2019, they conducted numerous space launches. Even in 2020, despite the challenges posed by the pandemic, China successfully carried out 34 launches out of a planned 40, more than any other country. One of the notable achievements was China's mission to 
the far side of the moon. They also successfully landed the Chang'e 5 moon lander on the moon in December 2020, bringing back lunar samples. Additionally, China completed its Beidou navigation satellite system, providing an alternative to the US GPS system. China is also working on sending astronauts to the moon and has long-term goals of reaching Mars. China's new laser technology is another incredible feat. According to reports from the South China Morning Post SCMP, a group of scientists at the National University of Defense Technology in Changsha has achieved a major breakthrough in developing a new type of weapon that employs laser beams as a means of targeting and attacking various objects. This innovation centers around a cutting-edge cooling system designed to tackle one of the critical challenges in laser-based weaponry. One of the primary issues with high-energy lasers is their tendency to become extremely hot during operation, which can result in a loss of power and functionality. However, China's newly developed cooling system appears to address this problem effectively. By preventing the lasers from overheating, this technology allows them to fire continuous laser beams for an extended period without the risk of malfunction or degradation in performance. The implications of this breakthrough are substantial and far-reaching. In the realm of warfare, the ability to deploy laser-based weapons that can operate continuously without overheating could revolutionize the dynamics of military engagement. Traditional munitions such as bullets and missiles have limitations in terms of ammunition and reload times. Laser weapons, on the other hand, could offer a virtually limitless supply of firepower, provided they have a sustainable power source. Researchers in China have also developed a microwave machine, relative Clistron Amplifier RKA. This device has the potential to disrupt or damage satellites in space. The RKA is capable of generating a powerful wave burst, measuring 5 megawatts, in the K-band of the electromagnetic spectrum. The K-band is increasingly utilized for various applications, both civilian and military, including satellite communication and data transmission. Using such a device for electronic warfare purposes could involve jamming or disrupting the functionality of satellites, which could have substantial implications for communication, navigation, and reconnaissance capability. It's worth noting that electronic warfare technologies, like the RKA, are not unique to China and many nations are developing similar capabilities as part of their defense strategy. However, one critical question that people have been asking is whether this new laser technology qualifies as a direct energy weapon. DE. If China's development indeed falls into this category, it could mark a significant shift in the global military landscape. So, what exactly is a direct energy weapon? Directed energy weapons are a new frontier in military technology, and they offer a different approach to warfare by utilizing focused energy to damage or incapacitate targets without the need for traditional solid projectiles like bullets or missiles. These weapons harness various forms of energy, including lasers, microwaves, particle beams, and sound beams, to deliver precise, concentrated force over long distances. The potential applications of DWs are broad and versatile, ranging from anti-personnel systems that can incapacitate or deter enemy combatants, to anti-missile systems designed to intercept and destroy incoming projectiles. Additionally, DWs can target vehicles, aircraft, and even optical devices. Their precision and speed make them a promising tool for future military operations. In the United States, many research institutions and agencies have been actively engaged in DW research and development. Among them are the Pentagon, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, the Air Force Research Laboratory, the United States Army Armament Research Development and Engineering Center, and the Naval Research Laboratory. Their collective efforts are primarily focused on developing DWs to counter emerging threats like ballistic missiles, hypersonic cruise missiles, and hypersonic glide vehicles. While these technologies hold great promise, it's important to note that the deployment of such systems in the field is expected no sooner than the mid to late 2020s. One of the notable recent developments in the field of DWs was reported in Libya in August 2019. Turkey claimed to have deployed a directed energy weapon known as the Al-Ka during military operations. Despite the considerable progress made in the research and development of DWs over the past few decades, it's worth noting that many of these systems are still in the experimental phase.
Their widespread deployment as practical, high-performance military weapons remains uncertain and hinges on various factors. These factors include overcoming technical challenges, addressing ethical considerations related to their use, and integrating them effectively into military strategies and operations. However, recent moves from China suggest that we might have one pretty soon. This is worrying because the deployment of DEWs as operational weapons on a large scale needs to be put under a complex web of technical, ethical, and strategic considerations. While China may deny that the RKA is a do, the potential destructive power of such a system, if scaled up, suggests that it could be used as an anti-satellite weapon or for other military purposes. Also, there is documented evidence dating back to 2013 that Chinese researchers were exploring the development of space-based laser systems. This concept was initially proposed by researchers Gao Minghui, Zheng Yu Kuang, and Wang Ji Hong in the December 2013 issue of the journal Chinese Optics. These researchers argued that anti-satellite weapons would become increasingly significant in future conflicts, and space-based laser systems could play a substantial role in such capabilities. In addition to space-based lasers, China has also been involved in the development of other advanced technologies, like electromagnetic railguns and high-power microwave weapons for potential military applications. Military expert Richard Fisher noted that as long as China demonstrates a willingness to utilize its space program for potential military purposes, it's important for the United States to have options for countering potential threats, ideally without resorting to actions that would risk human lives. This highlights the evolving landscape of space as a potential domain for military competition and the need for strategic considerations in response to emerging technologies. The United States and its allies are increasingly recognizing the challenges posed by China's rapid advancements across various domains, with particular concern over Beijing's remarkable progress in space technology. China's commitment to marshalling substantial resources, fostering cutting-edge technology development, and displaying unwavering political determination in its space endeavors is raising alarm bells, especially as space emerges as the new frontier in geopolitical competition. So, the Pentagon is taking a proactive approach to address these concerns. It is conducting a comprehensive policy review that encompasses nuclear weapons strategy, the positioning of global troops, and an overall reassessment of defense strategy. The objective is to ensure that the United States retains its strategic edge and remains well prepared to respond to evolving threat in the rapidly changing global landscape. Also, the Biden administration is actively working to reorient all aspects of U.S. foreign and defense policy to better address contemporary challenges. This includes not only concerns related to China's advancements in space, but also broader geopolitical shifts that are reshaping international relations. Even NATO is undergoing significant changes. Recognizing the growing importance of the Indo-Pacific region as a center of global economic and political gravity, NATO is extending its mission focus. Additionally, recognizing the significance of space in modern conflict and security, NATO is in the process of establishing a NATO Space Command Center. These adaptations reflect NATO's commitment to ensuring collective defense and security in an ever-evolving global landscape. Also, the United States has declared its intention to unveil a previously undisclosed space weapon to the public very soon. This announcement carries a dual purpose. Not only will it showcase the United States' technological advancements in space weaponry, but it also serves as a clear message to other nations with military capabilities in space. It is clear that the U.S. needs to act quickly, as China has already reportedly infiltrated the U.S. successfully. Remember January 28th, when United States government officials were busy trying to cover up a number of so-called Chinese spy balloons penetrating its airspace? There were also reports that Chinese satellites were firing down lasers into the skies above Hawaii. The Subaru telescope on Mauna Kea captured an unusual sight through its live-streaming Subaru Asahi star camera. After investigation, the source of these lights was identified as a Chinese satellite. While this discovery may have raised concerns, the government reassured its citizens, suggesting that the Chinese satellite was likely monitoring weather conditions over Hawaii. 
NASA chimed in, speculating that the satellite in question, the Chinese Daki 1 AEMS satellite, might be involved in monitoring global carbon levels and atmospheric pollution worldwide. However, there are a lot of people who believe that the government isn't telling the whole story. The country that will feel the impact of China's expanding capabilities in space the most is definitely India. While India may not have the same economic capacity to match China's space activities, it recognizes the need to develop its own space and counterspace capabilities to maintain a strategic balance. To achieve this, India is working on creating a minimum deterrent strategy, focusing on acquiring niche technologies related to anti-satellite, ASAT, and other non-kinetic systems in outer space. India has already taken steps in this direction, including conducting exercises like InSpaceX in 2019, which brought together military and scientific stakeholders to discuss space-related security challenges. India has also demonstrated its ASAT capabilities by successfully testing an interceptor missile to destroy a satellite in low Earth orbit. This achievement, known as Mission Shakti, showcased India's ability to protect its space asset. India is also in the process of establishing a Tri-Services Defense Space Agency, which will eventually lead to the formation of a full-fledged space command by 2025 to 2027. India also has to understand the importance of forming coalitions and partnerships with like-minded nations to strengthen its position in space and enhance its information dominance. Exploring collaborations such as the NATO Open Door Policy for India and leveraging the Indo-US Strategic Partnership, including agreements like BECA, Basic Exchange and Cooperation Agreement, are crucial steps. Maintaining an information domination edge over China through a real-time OODA loop, Observe, Orient, Decide, Act, is also another strategic goal. This allows India to have superior situational awareness, which has proven valuable in the India-China standoff in Ladakh. Despite the significant disparity in power, India's ability to leverage information and real-time data has contributed to a combat stalemate. While China has invested significantly more in space over the last two decades, India has managed to match its capabilities through smart geopolitical positioning and strategic partnerships. India's space strategy involves harnessing niche technologies from the United States and maximizing the integration of space assets with partner nations rather than reinventing systems. Towards this, the recent establishment of a Situational Awareness Center at Bangalore is a great milestone in the management of real-time information and its military application. This can offset China's space superiority. It is clear that China is making its mark in military and space tech. As these developments continue to unfold, it is becoming increasingly obvious that the dynamics of space power are shifting, and nations around the world, especially the United States, are closely monitoring and adapting to these changes. Now, all we can do is wait and see how the world reacts. What do you think about all this? Let us know down in the comments section.